Welcome back. This is David McCrum coming to you from Fredericksburg, Virginia, and hopefully you are uh, learning how to be happy while under house arrest. We're looking at a small study in the book of Philippians, and I just wanted to touch base with you about five minutes each week as we're adjusting to these challenges that God has for us in this time. We looked at lesson number one uh, last week from the first few verses of Philippians. And today I want to leave you with a few thoughts from Philippians chapter 1, verse 9 to 11. So lesson number one was, uh, be confident, God is in control. Lesson number two, love one another love one another. It's maybe unfortunate that we have used this term recently, social distancing, um, because it's more about physical distancing than social distancing. And the church at Philippi certainly was far removed from Paul. Uh, He was a long way away, and certainly we are too. And yet this letter is proof that they were trying to connect on a social level, spiritual level. And in verse 9, uh, Paul says, I pray that your love may abound more and more. And then he gives us three ways. And I want to touch on these, specifically in some of the, uh, the issues that we're facing now. And it will help us to know how to respond to some of these things. He says in verse 9, that your love may abound still more and more. And notice he says, first of all, in knowledge, in knowledge. Uh, Julie and I have really enjoyed, and again, thank you to Pastor Clive and to the AV team for updating the website and getting these things online. I, I loved the message last Sunday from Zachariah um, by Pastor Clive. Uh, when Jesus comes, will you be ready? What a message for Palm Sunday. And I appreciated Brother Louis. Good Friday message, you know, about the Lord will provide and and tying these things all together. Uh, So when Paul says that your love may abound in knowledge, you know, it's going to be a challenge for you and I to, to still submit to the teaching of God's word because it's not in a comfortable platform. Church online. Uh, we're here in the States trying to connect with our home church in Chattanooga, trying to connect to the church that we're at now in Fredericksburg, Virginia, trying to still stay connected to you. Uh, we're trying to touch three church families, and, and it's all online. And yet Paul says our love for one another will grow. How? When we increase our knowledge. Now let me challenge you. You need to stay plugged into the church by listening to the teaching of God's Word. By using this time to read your Bible, and maybe you're just going to do a seven-day Bible reading schedule on a Bible app. Say, you know, for the next seven days, I'm going to read the Psalms or, or the Proverbs. Or, but use this time to grow in your knowledge. Man, when Julie and I met and I fell in love with her, I wanted to know everything I could about her. I would drive 16 hours a week to get back from a meeting and spend all day Monday and all day Friday just to have a few days with her. Uh, yeah, to feel her hand, but to to see her face, to, to know her heart. When we love someone or something, we learn about it. And one way to love God is to learn about Him. One way to love each other is to learn how are you doing and to reach out to each other. And so he says that your love may abound more and more. How are you going to make it through this time? Happy while under house arrest. Well, love one another by growing in knowledge of each other's situations, challenges, job losses, financial constraints. By growing in knowledge about God and learning His Word and studying and reflecting and downloading the outlines that guys are posting and and helping your kids work through the the uh, children's bulletins lessons, but you can use this time to grow in knowledge. But notice he says, secondly about love, he says not only in knowledge, but he says and in all discernment. And boy, don't we need that now? 
not only in the day of false news, but but our lost world, our lost friends, neighbors, relatives, they don't know how to respond to these things. And we do, we should. That we have discernment, he says, that he may approve things that are excellent. As God's people, we should have a discerning mind to, to get the facts, disseminate them, to, to spread the message of hope thou in God, regardless of the turnout for my life. That, that you know what? I'm growing in my knowledge and discernment and my approval of this is what God's Word actually says. This is how I'm going to engage my world right now. Your love will grow during this time in knowledge and in discernment to learn about the situation at hand, to learn maybe about your finances. I'm using this time to get my finances in order and, and getting some more material. And I've always struggled there and trying to get, you know, maybe there's a, a, a certain part of your life that God is dealing with you about. You see, you know, I need to grow. I need to use this time to grow in my discernment and my approval of God's will in my life. God, where am I in life? Where am I with you? Where do you want me to be? Use this time for discernment and to approve the things that are excellent or should become excellent in your life. And lastly, how do we? How does our love abound? Uh, well, in knowledge and in discernment. And then thirdly, Paul says, uh, and that you may be sincere and without offense until the day of Jesus Christ. So I would say grow in having a good name. One way to love God and to love your, your fellow FBCers is to make sure that you have a good name during this time. There's several things you can be doing. If you are fortunate enough to be able to employ somebody, that's going to be a difficult road right now. I know we as a church, I've reached out to Keith, who's still acting as our treasurer, So, what can we do to make sure... Our domestic help is still funded during this time. Business owners are trying to make those tough calls. And, and let me encourage you. I asked Clive specifically, I said, please make sure the church's banking details are front and center on that website. You know what? We need to be faithful during this time. We want to still keep these people in our employ. We have an office administrator still working from home. We certainly need to be uh, supporting Clive and Corleen during this time is they they take even more of our responsibilities from Julie and I. That you know ministry is still happening. The Clive and Pastor Clive and and the office are are checking with every single church member of the church and trying to see where are our needs and what can we do here. And so, you know, we want to make sure that we are sincere and without offense. To be sincere that that our relationship to one another stands true, that we, we really see firsthand that the church is not a building, it's people, that we are WhatsApping, that we are calling, that we are praying for one another. Uh, I just read even today that, you know, to get certifications and get approval that the church can still minister to our elderly and those in need. And you know people in our church who are who are sick and desperately need to find a way to say, hey, can I drop off some groceries? And I know several, I think some have even reaching out to our Spring Valley uh, church there with Pastor Stambiso as well. But here's when our nature will be known. And let me challenge you to love one another, that we don't just focus on what this does for our family, but we say, you know what? What is this doing to God's family? And what would God have me do here? That I will prove my love through sincerity and then also without offense. As you navigate this time, people you know and love and fellowship and worship God with, they may respond differently to this scenario. And, and depending on your perspective or opinion, some might respond wisely, some might get angry. Some, you know what? Let us... Ask God to give us extra grace and patience and strength that we don't offend. That we don't offend the lost world, that we don't offend God's people, that we don't offend God. 
Say, God, help me to be sincere and without offense. And notice the third aspect of that. He says, and be filled with fruits of righteousness. You know, this is a day for FBCers to prove the sincerity of their love towards God and each other. And they say, I want my life in this time to have fruits of righteousness. Fruits of righteousness. My friend, Paul was happy during house arrest. He wrote the book of Philippians. He writes to the church at Philippi, which was actually one of the poorest churches in Macedonia. And yet they were known throughout the world, the Mediterranean world at that time, as one of the kindest, most generous church churches filled with good works. And that's my heart for FBC during this time. We are being stretched. Pastor Clive is being stretched. He's growing. I remember in, in December or November, he said, Pastor, I've never handled any crisis moments. And I told him back in November, I said, I have no idea what's going to happen, but I promise you when I'm gone, you're going to get some crisis management experience. Oh, my goodness. And, and we've been working through this together. He's doing a great job. I appreciate all the communication from the office and from Pastor Clive. It's so helpful. And we're getting better at this. But we as a church, FBCers, may our love abound more and more. May this time be cause for us to, to grow in our knowledge of God and each other, to grow in our discernment and proving, God, what is, what is excellent for my life right now? And, and then also to grow in a good name in our church and our community and in our world for God. We love you, and we look forward to seeing you very soon. Uh, please reach out to us on WhatsApp as well, and may God bless you.